Master your element, folks, because the first season of Avatar The Last Airbender is here. Netflix's live-action adaptation of the epic fantasy series is a visual treat and quite a mind-bending experience, both for the aficionados of the franchise and new fans. Our little protagonist, Aang, returns to the brand new version of the show as the part-time goofy and full-time savior of the world. Avatar The Last Airbender chronicles how the 12-year-old absolutely freaked out Aang goes from, I don't want the responsibility to I I'm the Avatar, and I'm gonna save the world with my friends. Kudos to the creators for bringing the charm of the original animated series into the live-action version, albeit with a sprinkle of creative liberties. So, what sets Netflix's Avatar, The Last Airbender, apart from the iconic show of the 2000s? Let's explore 10 major differences. Here, we would like to warn you that this video contains spoilers about the recently released Avatar, The Last Airbender show. So proceed only if you don't mind them. But before we do that, we have a small request. If you enjoy our content, please give this video a massive thumbs up, share it with your friends, and smash that subscribe button with the notification bell turned to all while you're at it. It helps us create the content that you love and bring in more marvelous viewers like you. Now, on to the video. A roundup of Avatar The Last Airbender franchise storyline. First, here's a refresher on the overall story arc and theme of Avatar The Last Airbender. The storyline is set in an Asian and Arctic-inspired world, comprising four nations based on the four classical elements of nature, water, earth, fire, and air. Some distinguished inhabitants of these nations can manipulate the element unique to their nation, who are known as the waterbenders, earthbenders, firebenders, and airbenders, respectively. However, only one person has control over all four elements. This person is none other than the titular Avatar, who is responsible for maintaining harmony among the nations, and also acts as the link between the mortal and the spiritual world. When an Avatar dies, the spirit gets transferred to another mortal, following a traditional sequence of the elements. In the franchise's storyline, the current Avatar was to emerge from the Air Nomads. To stop the Avatar from being created, the villainous Fire Nation carried out genocide against the air nomads and launched attacks on the remaining nations hoping to conquer the world. Little did they know that one air nomad would survive the Holocaust and turn out to be the Avatar aka Aang. However, following a tumultuous storm, Aang gets confined in suspended animation within an iceberg, disappearing from the world. After 100 years have passed, he is accidentally discovered by the siblings Katara and Sokka of the Water Tribe, who fill him in on the atrocious deeds that the Fire Nation has been carrying out for a century. Aang, who was afraid to assume his role as the Avatar 100 years ago, decides to master all four bending forms to thwart Fire Nation's attacking spree and fulfill his role as the Restorer of Peace, thus setting off a series of adventures with Katara and Sokka being his partners in crime. Meanwhile, Aang is the target of two more enemies, the first of which is the disgraced Prince Zuko, who must capture Aang and bring him back to the Fire Kingdom to regain his position as the rightful heir to the Fire Lord, and the second one is a Fire Nation commander named Zhao, who has dedicated his life and army to an endless pursuit of the Avatar. Differences. The pilot episodes begin on two different notes. Now, back to the differences and what better way to begin than with a comparison of the pilot episodes of the cartoon series of the 2000s and the recently released live action show. The Netflix series kickstarts with a thrilling chase which leads to a shocking revelation from Fire Lord So Zin, the ruler of the Fire Nation, about the war he is waging against the Air Nomads. This isn't about the Airbenders, this is about one who lives among them, the only one who could stand in our way, which is why we have to kill them all, said So Zin. While issuing the death order for the Avatar, the scene then shifts to the Southern Air Temple of the Air Nomads, and Aang is introduced as an airbending prodigy who loves to play airball, eat banana cakes, and is not allowed to feed the baby air bison. The episode also portrays Aang's affectionate relationship with his guardian, Monk Gyatso, who breaks the news to Aang that he is the next chosen Avatar, prompting this reply from the little airbender, I never asked to be special. What Gyatso said next 
next, stayed with Aang for the rest of his Avatar career. You are not just anyone, Aang. You are strong and kind and generous. Always remember who you are, because I cannot imagine a better person to have given this power. Back in the 2000s, the first episode of the cartoon series opened with Katara and Sokka discovering Aang inside an iceberg in the lands of the Water Tribes. Aang regained consciousness almost immediately and befriended the siblings, also subsequently giving them a ride on his air bison, Appa. This particular sequence comes much later in the live-action series, in which Aang remains unconscious till he is nursed back to health by the Water Tribes. Also, Katara and Sokka do not get to ride Appa so soon, but much later when they decide to chase Prince Zuko's ship, who has taken Aang hostage. In the hilarious scene, Sokka screams his lungs out while Katara enjoys the aerial journey. Genocide of the Air Nomads is shown, unlike the cartoon series. Unlike the cartoon series, Fire Nation's attack on the Southern Air Temple is shown in a detailed sequence in the Netflix show. A stunning aerial shot of the temple, with fiery attacks raining down on the peaceful structure, made for a captivating but horrifying scene. It was not featured in the original, but included in the live-action show to highlight the importance of the event that kicked off the whole epic saga. The Great Comet Festival was underway at the realm of the Air Nomads, because of which air nomads from the other temples, the whole lot of them, had conglomerated at the festival for the celebrations. With all the air nomads under one roof, Fire Lord Sozin launched a brutal attack, ruthlessly murdering each one of the air nomads. While this event was referenced in the original series, its live-action recreation was indeed a pleasant surprise. Fire Lord Sozin attacking Monkey Yatso scene. Another scene that did not feature in the original but made an impactful entry in the live action series is the face off between Sozin and Monkey Yatso. When the firebenders attacked the air nomads, the benevolent Monkey Yatso sheltered a group of kids in the Southern Air Temple, which was, however, soon infiltrated by Sozin and his army. FYI, Sozin timed his attack on the air nomads in sync with the cryptic comet's arrival, an event that accentuates the power of the firebenders tremendously. Sozin reiterated this fact before launching his deadly fire blast at Monk Gyatso. You may have prevailed on another night, but not when we have the power of the comet. Sozin's powerful attack engulfed Gyatso, who perished in the flames. Hundred years later, Aang discovered Gyatso's skeleton inside the dilapidated Southern Air Temple, and was overwhelmed with grief and anger, prompting his transformation into the Avatar state. The Agnikai between Zuko and his dad, Fire Lord Ozai, is shown extensively. This brings us to the inclusion of another influential scene that stands out as a difference between the two shows, separated by two decades. We are talking about the Agnikai sequence featuring the face-off between Prince Zuko and his dad, Fire Lord Ozai. While this was briefly shown in the original show, the new series explored it extensively, adding an entire fight sequence for a better understanding of Zuko's tragic backstory. You couldn't have always been this way. Way. What happened to you? Ong asks Zuko, prompting a series of flashbacks which feature Zuko being challenged to an Agni Kai by his father. This sacred ritual is a fire duel in which two firebenders fight for honor. An Agni Kai generally ends with the weaker opponent getting burnt, who then has to shave off his head as a mark of defeat. Through the Agni Kai, Fire Lord Ozai's only intention was to humiliate his son, just because Zuko called his battle plan a terrible idea. The hair raising fight sequence of two whole minutes, a glimpse of which also appeared in the trailer trailer, ends with Zuko aiming his fire fist at Ozai, but sparing him. This infuriates Ozai even further, who declares, compassion is a sign of weakness, and proceeds to burn Zuko's face. That's how Zuko got his signature scar on his left eye. Not done with Zuko, Ozai further assigned him an impossible mission, telling him, you are not to return until you have conquered the greatest remaining threat to our destiny. You will find, capture, and bring me the Avatar. the nature of Aang's disappearance from the world. Another difference between the cartoon and the live-action series is the nature of Aang's disappearance. In the cartoon storyline, Aang overheard the Council of Elders discussing Aang's position as the new Avatar, and that he was to sever ties with his guardian monk Gyatso, as the monk appeared to hinder Aang's manifestation of the Avatar's abilities. This immediately prompted Aang to consciously run away from the Air Nomads, following which he is caught up in a storm and gets stuck in an icy 
icy prison, thus vanishing from the world for 100 long years. Also in the cartoon, Aang's disappearance did not coincide with the genocide carried out by the Fire Nation warriors, as is shown in the Netflix show. In the live-action version, Aang learnt of his new identity as the Avatar from Gyatso himself. Overwhelmed with the new information, he appeared visibly distressed and simply flew out into the sky with Appa just to clear his head. He then got engulfed in a gigantic, stormy tide, leading to his icy entrapment for 100 years. In the Netflix show, Aang had no intentions of running away like his cartoon counterpart did. the change in Katara's water-bending skills. One major difference between the cartoon and the live-action show is the portrayal of how Katara's water-bending skills are manifested. The cartoon version of Katara was a skilled waterbender in the making and the last of her kind, while her live-action equivalent struggles to launch the smallest of water attacks, to the point that Katara is reprimanded by Sokka for trying too hard to manifest her water-bending powers. Also, the cartoon showed Katara and Aang mastering the art of water bending together, while in the live-action version, the water-bending department is dominated by Katara, with Aang simply watching her antics. Katara launches her first major water-bending attack against a fiery blast of Prince Zuko, which was aimed at Aang during an aerial fight. Katara's impressive feat surprised not only her friends, but also her own self. The brief mention of Sazen's Comet. Another difference between the two shows is the degree of importance assigned to Sozin's Comet. Interestingly, Sozin's Comet, which played a significant role in the first season of the cartoon show, finds just a mention in the finale episode of the live-action series. That, too, in a mid credit scene. In the cartoon, Aang had to master his skills as the Avatar before the return of Sozin's Comet, which took place within the time frame of one year. But the makers of the live-action series expanded the one-year timeline around Sozin's Comet return to factor in that the actors will age by the time production on the second season is completed. Having said that, the Netflix show's credit sequence did suggest that Sozin's Comet will play a bigger role in the next season. In the brief credit scene, the Great Sage informs Ozai about the appearance of the Sozin's Comet on his globe, which is returning after a century. It's taken a hundred years, but the time finally draws near. Sozin's Comet is named after the Fire Lord who wiped out the Air Nomads on the fateful night that the Comet appeared appeared and augmented the powers of the firebenders. It is believed that when the comet passes through the vicinity of Earth's surface every hundred years, it gives the firebenders the power of a hundred suns. Azula gets more screen time. One more tweak that the creators of the live-action series have incorporated is giving Azula, Fire Lord Ozai's daughter, and Zuko's sister a lot more screen time than she had in the original cartoon. The feisty Azula, who indeed makes for a challenging antagonist and the perfect contrast to Zuko, appears in all eight episodes of season one with a more complex storyline. She does what Zuko never could, say no to her father's demands. Towards the end of the season, Azula has had enough of her dad Ozai pitting her against prisoners to prove her mettle, and refuses to take part in yet another fight-or-fail duel. When reprimanded by Ozai with a fire attack, she harvests a lightning energy and channels it into a thunderous attack as a display of her abilities. She also issues this declaration to her father, You want to test me? Set me loose. Let me go into the world and show you what I can really do. I am through playing games here. Azula eventually goes on to conquer Omashu of the Earth Kingdom, which in the original cartoon was a mission not led by her. The first avatar that Aang meets is Kyoshi, not Roku. The live-action series has added some twists to Aang's relationship with other avatars. In the original series, the first avatar that Aang encountered was Roku at the Fire Nation Temple. It was during this meeting that Roku informed Aang about the impending arrival of Sozin's Comet and how the event would augment Lord Ozai's firebending powers. In the live-action series, the first avatar that Aang experiences is Kyoshi, who exhibits the power of the avatar by manifesting through the little protagonist. All Aang had to say was these magic words while meditating at the shrine, Avatar Kyoshi, help me. Following which Kyoshi appeared and explained to Aang the many dimensions of being an avatar, which in the original, Aang had to learn gradually. Aang, who was struggling to understand what being an avatar entails, was old by Kyoshi. You need to be a guardian, a general, a mediator, a guide. You must fill several roles and many of them require unparalleled strength. Kyoshi also revealed that the avatar state gives him the strength 
of a thousand benders. While communicating with Kyoshi in the spirit realm, Aang had no consciousness of the real world and was oblivious to Fire Nation's deadly attack on Kyoshi Island. The situation was salvaged by Kyoshi, who assumed control of Aang's body and destroyed the Fire Nation forces. After Kyoshi's departure, Aang returned to his own self, thus realizing the responsibilities and powers that come with being an avatar. While it was Roku who controlled Aang in the cartoon, the live-action version assigns the role to Kyoshi, resulting in an ethereal sequence. Not many, but a few new characters. In a welcome move, the live-action adaptation has introduced a new character in the Kyoshi story arc, which has always been a fan-favorite segment of the cartoon. We are talking about Yukari, Suki's mom, and the protective mayor of a tiny village on Kyoshi Island. Suki, who is the head of the Kyoshi warriors, never had her family around in the original cartoon, and thus Yukari's introduction means the creators are willing to expand the Avatar universe beyond the boundaries of the original series. Yukari appears in the second episode, who houses Aang and his friends in her village, and stands up to Commander Zhao when he threatens to destroy their village in search of Aang. Yukari exhibits some pretty savage moves against Zhao's army, and as a fierce matriarch fights with the fans just as adeptly as her daughter Suki. After suffering losses in the battle with the firebenders, Yukari assures Aang that nothing has been lost as he has given them something far more valuable in return, a reason to believe again. Another new inclusion is the character of Ido, who however doesn't get too much screen time but proves to be important to Kataro and Sokka's initial story arc. Before embarking on his quest to save Aang in the first episode, Sokka entrusts Ido as the guardian of Wolf Cove in the South Pole, telling him he is in charge during Sokka's absence. In addition to these differences, the Netflix show comes with some other twists and turns not seen in the cartoon version. For example, the inclusion of Aang's reunion with his guardian monk in the spirit realm, and Zuko's rather informative journal about his research on the Avatar. The live-action show also evidently sheds much more light on the internal functioning of the Fire Nation royal family than the cartoon. Netflix's Avatar, The Last Airbender, proves to be a somewhat loyal adaptation of the original series, peppered with some new elements and surprises, which have the potential to either anger or delight fans of the franchise. As we bid you goodbye for now, for some uninterrupted Avatar watching, please remember Aang's words, this is just the beginning. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.